Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan with a really good example of the kind of integrity and decency and transparency that we conduct ourselves with here at Halo RV. Because I'm gonna put this right out there. This thing's got a bad floor. Like, it's got a really bad floor and it's a shame because the other five sides of the trailer, the sidewalls, the front, the rear, the roof, are actually in pretty good condition. Unfortunately, this one has had a significant amount of water penetration into the floor and there's some spots where to say that it's soft is putting it delicately now i'm a, about a 200 pound dad bod dude right now i didn't fall through the floor although i stepped on one spot and i started going oh 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 i started getting freaked out a little bit but it held so if what you're looking for is a problem free philosophy hakuna matata this is not the one for you um if what you're looking for is a budget beater, something you might use casually, and I and I have some really, I think, good low dollar suggestions on how to overcome the kind of challenges that you're facing here without breaking the bank, there's a lot of life left in this camper still. Is it perfect? No. Is it ever gonna be perfect again? Probably not, no. Is it the price of a 20,000, 30,000 brand new dollar hybrid? Also, no. Handyman special. <laughs> Now, in an effort to give you just the best understanding possible, we're just gonna watch my feet so that you can see how the floor kind of moves and deflects under my feet. So I'm starting here in the kitchen. As I start moving forward, right about the, oh yeah, oh yeah, right about the time you cross that line. So there's, there's a floor member right here, and then you can probably see. But the thing is, it actually gets worse. So there's another cross member right there, and then, woo! Woo! <laughs> she gone, boys! But, again, I'm a 200-pound dude. Uh, I can stand on it on one foot. It will hold. It has absolutely been badly, badly compromised. And again, I think this video is just a textbook example of the way that we conduct ourselves at Halet RV. Because if I just went like this and panned around, you would have no idea uh, that this RV has some some very significant flooring issues. Now, you can see some discoloration back here. That's pretty obvious. But what I actually, what surprised me is this is, this is not even the worst of it. There's a little bit of staining here, but for the most part, that's pretty solid. Now, it is softer over here, and it is uh, solid under here. Now, what exactly exists under that cabinet? I don't know. I can't see it, and I can't get to it. But like I said, that is not the worst of it. Again, it is soft pretty significantly right there. But where it's... I, I don't know what else, how else to say it other than uh, she gone. She gone. Now, the rest of the RV is actually in surprisingly good condition. There's just a couple of factors that led to this. Um, I also want to touch on maybe what could you do about it without breaking the bank. Because this is a laminated floor. You're, you're not just going to fix it. You're not just going to replace it. Um, maybe there's some people out there with some real high level skills that could take stuff apart and rebuild something that, you know, just is gone like that. Most of us, most of us, that's just totally not going to be the case. And even the people who can rebuild it, the, the effort and often the cost required is typically very prohibitive. As uh, my service manager used to say, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. And I think you might be right. So, First of all, what's happening here is this is a classic ultralight floor. They, uh, lightweight laminated stuff is fairly new in the history of RVing. And at the time this was made, when you first built it, when you had studs in the floor, like every four feet on center and the floor was only an inch and a half to two inches thick, you could walk all over, it felt solid, it felt fine. The problem is seven or eight years after that RV was built, you really started to see that they were not holding up. Most modern laminated floors have studs at least every two feet on center. They have thicker floors. They usually uh, put more support under the floor than just the laminated floor itself. This is basically like we're walking on a wall, effectively. The other thing here is there's definitely been some water penetration. I suspect it's because the floor has deflected enough that it actually stressed and broke a seal and let some water through in a couple different areas. But what, what can you do about this? Well, you could do nothing. It appears to be working right now. Uh, I, as far as I can see, because we had some rain over the weekend, I don't see where it's leaking currently. I don't want to guarantee that though, because we have not had it in like a, a, a rain bay and, and tested this thing with a seal tech machine. Um, but it looks t 
to be holding sound right now. The other thing I think it could do is get some very inexpensive, expensive. Yeah, get some get some expensive, inexpensive click plank linoleum flooring, Menards, Home Depot, wherever your your preference, and lay it down across this floor. Cut it around the furniture. That will give you an upper deck support that will distribute your weight as you're walking and provide less stress on the subfloor below. It won't fix the problem. The floor is shot straight straight away. I hope you appreciate the fact that I don't sugarcoat that. This floor is done, son. But uh, it will allow you to get more use of walking around this thing without likely further stressing and damaging it. And if you're like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want anything to do with that. I totally get it. Frankly, I wouldn't either, but I'm not the one buying this. You may be, and I'm going to shoot you straight. Um, and if there's anything else like this that we ever find, we will make sure that we go out of our way to show you. So if this isn't the one for you, no sweat. Check something else out that we have. And if I don't go out of my way to tell you how wrecked it is, that's probably because it ain't wrecked. <laughs> In the meantime, though, if you're okay with this, or a workaround, or just leaving it as it is for the right money, check the link in our video description where we always have it listed. And um, that'll also tell you if it's actually available. Uh, uh, you know, if it's there, it's available. If it's not in that link, it's gone. And um, for the right money, you might be interested. Let's see what else she's got. Because other than this, and this is admittedly significant, other than this, it's, <laughs> it's actually really nice. So using our entry door here as just a kind of reference, I, I like how everything is light and bright. Even without the lighting on, uh, it's nice and light and bright in here. And when the camera's not pointed directly at one of those bed ends, which is all kinds of backlit, you see it does brighten up quite a bit. You might notice that weight distributing hitch head right there. The previous owner's hitching and anti-sway stuff is all included with that. We'll get another look at that um, uh, when we hop outside. Now this does have a shallow sofa slide. If the sofa is uh, not deployed, if the slide is left retracted, you can still walk all the way through here and get up to that front 60 by 80 queen bed, which is kind of cool. Uh, the dinette over here, if need be, could fold down into an extra sleeper. There is uh, a little bit of storage below. I believe that bench, this bench over here, I see some heat ducting. I'm not sure if that one does. Now, this is a classic dinette arrangement, and I wish more brands would actually resume using this. It doesn't look fancy, but it's super effective. It's lightweight. It's a no knee knocker for the most part. It's something that I really appreciate. Another thing I really like is the window coverage on this. Um, the, uh, first of all, all of your bed ends, you see those can zipper down and just give you amazing views, uh, light airflow. But if it's going to be a hot day, you obviously want to keep the sunshine out of this thing and draw the shades as we've done right here. But that window opens for airflow. You've got a big window for airflow over the kitchen space. And when you're sitting here on the sofa, first of all, you can see your campsite. Plus there's a window behind us. Additionally though, you're really in the mix with your family or friends or whatever the case might be over here. And the kitchen in this is surprisingly good. That, uh, that kind of bar right there helps define the kitchen from the rest of the living space. And uh, there's a surprising amount of storage going on down here. Again, using that little entry area as a reference, uh, I mean, every little pocket they could, they open up. This is a no oven model, but that does mean that it has a uh, bigger storage compartment right there. And this is something that a lot of brands in the very lightweight categories had done in years past. Instead of traditional drawers, which weighed a little more, they had some lightweight plastic totes that just kind of slid out and acted like drawers. I actually kind of always like that because you could always have like, uh, it doesn't have to be just a kitchen drawer now. You can take it outside. You could have a bin dedicated just for the kids. You could have a little hand wash bin, basin, or something like that outside. You know, there's a couple interesting different ways you could use those other than just a drawer. Or you could take one or two of them out to create like a taller drawer or cabinet space if need be. There's some very interesting things that you can come up with those things. Or rather, some interesting things you could come up with using those. There we go. <sighs> Words are hard, okay. I got my RV nerd approved Adidas door stop in action right here so we can get ourselves into the bathroom space, which actually surprised me a little bit. That extra chunk of counter space and that big vent fan up there, I was not expecting. I really expected this to be a toilet, a sink, and a shower in a little box. And it's not much more than that. 
but those extra little touches sometimes make a heck of a difference. Now, as tall as I am uh, at uh, about, you know, 6'3-ish, if I stand in here with, uh, you know, my, my with, with no skylight, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I'm gonna have to go see the chiropractor, but you spend a couple minutes in the shower, you dip a little bit like this, you rinse yourself off, you get in and out, I don't know, eight minute military shower or whatever. Some people it's a big deal, for me it's not. It just all depends on you. I just wanna do my best to show you what's what. And again, other than that floor on the inside, really, especially considering the model year, it's not all bad, like very nicely sized power awning on here. The uh, This is a classic style hybrid where you do still have bed support poles that go under those. It's not uh, a cable supported hybrid like the newer generations are. The tires look good. There's a little bit of weathering on some decals. I'll get you up close and personal here so you can check that out. I actually highly suspect these are not the original tires because those look way too good. Those look really good, but that's not a bad thing. You know, saying that a tire looks too good is not a bad thing. The rest of the decals I noticed look pretty good. Over here on the door side, I noticed that they're peeled and flaked uh, pretty significantly. That really indicates to me that this RV was parked with the door side facing east, because that, in my experience, tends to get the biggest of the sun baking, easy bake oven exposure. Now, in this front compartment here, kind of like under part of that hybrid bed, you do have a full pass-through, which is great because a lot of hybrids don't have any outside storage. And you see there is the remainder of the uh, previous owner's hitching system. So the hitch head, anti-sway bar, the uh, load distributing bars, all that stuff is included with this. Keep in mind, if uh, like every vehicle, hitch, and trailer combination, it's sort of like a thumbprint where they look the same, but they're all really individually varying. So uh, the, if the hitch needs adjusted to be put on your vehicle, there may be some labor time uh, that you know needs to be incurred on that. But again, I hope you appreciate the fact that we're proactively notifying you about this stuff. We're not trying to sucker punch and hit you after the fact or anything like that. Slide awning added up here. I got a feeling that was added probably in just the last couple of years. I see a little bit of spotting on it. I don't see any sort of rough areas where like the wind has rattle trapped it around or anything like that. The main awning actually looks pretty good as well. Um, backing up here a little bit, I like that outside utility shower by the, um, oh, just above the sewer hookup uh, kind of station right there. Now this thing is very low riding. I believe the overall exterior height on this was less than 10 feet total, which is virtually unheard of by most of today's tandem axle travel trailers. This is just a, a lighter generation of trailer riding on some lower, uh, uh, you know, rating axles. Didn't need to be sitting high in the sky. Also, something people ask all the time, why are campers sitting so high nowadays? And it's because vehicles keep getting taller, so campers have to follow suit. Um, let's take a look at the roof. And again, I didn't really see anything up on that roof line that had me too awful concerned for the most part. It actually looked pretty good up there. Again, it, it's definitely a case where uh, the, uh, the flooring was this one's Achilles heel, as it were. Because man, other than that, man, she's good to go. But at the same time, that flooring issue is saving you thousands of dollars. Because if this was in perfect shape, uh, we wouldn't be asking a, uh, a bargain basement tag for it. <laughs> so if what you've seen is kind of a disqualifier and you said, nah, it's just, it's too far gone. It's too much for me. I get it. I get it. This is not the one for you. At least hit the like button on the video and, and subscribe if you haven't, knowing that we will always shoot you straight on stuff. But if you're saying, okay, I like that little click plank flooring idea, or I've got some, I don't know, I could cut some plywood out or something like that, put it around the fixtures. It could get me through a couple seasons. Um, you know? This, this is one that I think has some merit. It's certainly not for everybody. It's gotta be for the right person. And I hope you appreciate the fact that we told you before you went driving three or four hours uh, to find out that, oh man, this thing has a really soft floor and that price tag really was too good to be true. By the way, I always leave a link for pricing and availability down in the video description. If you have any other questions, you need extra information, you let our team know, we'll do our best to fill in. So short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo Camp at everyone.